The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Old Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Reed McCoys. Ambassador Hotel is a regular palace. Yeah. <laughs> Makes you dizzy looking up. Yeah, I never seen a room in a house like this. <laughs> hey, oh, do you want to get in? Well, we'd love to have you, but this is as far as we're going. Grandpa, he's just opening the door for us to get out. Oh. <laughs> Grandpa, I think the fella just wants to park it for you. Oh, oh, all right. But she ain't never been handled by no stranger before. <laughs> so go easy on her. Look out for that clutch now. She'll jump out on you. <laughs> you. You just give her the gas easy. Don't miss down on her. Be sure you bring back the right one. <laughs> Good <laughs> Well, save it for later. Yeah. Grandpa, couldn't you have brought along a dry trick? <laughs> well... <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Well, this is what I call a parlor. <laughs> this carpet feels like it's four inches thick. Yeah, it sure is a treat to your arches. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's the world's famous coconut grove I was telling you about, Luke. Oh, yeah. When you see a place like this, you know you are someplace. <laughs> well, let's find out where the lodge headquarters are, huh? <laughs> Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith? Yeah, I'll ask this little fusion here with a cookie dish on his head. Say, boy, <laughs> you know where the Mystic Knowledge is a gathering at? Yes, sir. Straight ahead, sir. Thank you. Well, Luke, cock your pears, mount your camel, and let's get to an island. Thank you, Jim. Here we go, my good. Thank you. Oh, mount your camel, mount your camel. Go, right now. Put me down. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, hey, oh, hey, honey. I wish they wouldn't do that. They're just having fun, Luke. They don't mean no harm. This is convention time. Nobody minds. Here, watch this. <laughs> oh, now you've done it, Grandpa. That's the grand exalted pharaoh of the whole lodge. <laughs> Excuse me, your, your grand highness. You, you, let me have dry off. I never recognized it for who you was. You see, it all happened so fast, I didn't get a chance to see your hat. It's all right. Forget it. The same old story. There are always a few roughnecks in the crowd. Now you listen to It might interest you to know that some of us attend these functions in order to get a little work done. We don't just play. <laughs> well, R.T. Overland himself. Our firm did $2 million worth of business with him last year. Excuse me, I'd better go over and say hello. I'll be right back. 
Grandpa, he was real mad at you. Maybe you better give me your hand buzzer and your flower squirter just to keep in my purse. Well, if I do that, I might just as well have stayed home. Oh, I better register at the ladies' auxiliary. All right, hon. <laughs> you having fun, fellas? Well, we was until we heard about that new rule the lodge is putting through. New rule? Well, ain't you heard? After you get to be 65, you can't hold any kind of office and you can't vote no more. Well, that's the gorgeous thing I ever heard of. Well, that's terrible. Say, Doc, wasn't you supposed to become a member of the Grand Council in July? Yeah, after 25 years, automatically. Gosh, Doc here would have been the first Grand Council member our Valley Branch would have ever had. Oh, shut it ain't fair. Gosh, if I uh, couldn't keep active in my lodge, I'd be lost for sure. Well, the rule ain't been put through yet, has it? No, but what's going to stop it? I'll stop it. At least why I give it a try. Well, you're the man to do it, Amos. No doubt about it, but you're the best talker from amongst us. Yeah, well, uh, who do we say about this ruling here? Uh, the rules committee meeting's at 11 o'clock, uh, right over there. Well, I'll be ready. Ah, uh, Amos, you're true blue or a yard one. <laughs> well, I feel a lot better now that you've taken over. <laughs> Come on, Doc, let's look around. Yeah, no, no, no. Come on, yeah. <laughs> Look, am I going to tell them rule-making nihilists a thing or two? I'm going in there, and I'm just going to plow them under. I'm going to sit, 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 simmer down, Grandpa. You can't just go busting in the room and start yelling a lot of wild things at people. You got to go in there with some kind of a some kind of a figured out speech. It's all got to be thought out. Well, I'm all registered. Hey, okay, we got to help Grandpa put together an important speech. Yeah, let's go someplace where we can sit down and take a load off my feet at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> How about the swimming plunge? Yeah, I'd like to go to the swimming plunge so I can fill up my flower again. Oh, <laughs> Grandpa. Mr. Lampy. Now, uh, how, would, uh, how would you start this speech, Kate? Well, it's necessary when talking to people, you address them by their title, like uh, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the Rules Committee. <laughs> uh, Luke, do you think we should say members of the Mystic Nine? Luke. Oh yeah, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Committee sounds just fine. Oh, you're no hemp at all. <laughs> Luke's eyes was on the athletes. <laughs> so I noticed. Uh, now, Grandpa, let's try the beginning, just to make sure we got it right. You know, this meeting's not only important to Sam and Doc, but to you, too, Grandpa. Well, don't you think I know that? Well, let's try the beginning, then. Uh, you members of the committee and... Oh, oh. <laughs> I think we'd better go inside and find us a nice, quiet spot to sit down. But, Sugar Babe, it's nice out here. It's warm and it's sunny and... <laughs> Luke, we're going inside. Let's go. And you keep your eyes straight ahead. Yeah, I sure will, sugar babe. <laughs> Mr. Chairman and members of the miserable room. <laughs> Sugar babe, there's a big difference between I and a pretty girl as against admiring a fine swimmer. They wasn't even in the water. They was just parading around. Yeah, well, but there ain't nothing wrong with watching a parade. <laughs> ain't that right, Grandpa? G Grandpa? Where is he? Well, he's right behind us two seconds ago. <laughs> Put me down. <laughs> Oh, I ain't interested in no Japanese lunch. Oh, all right, then we'll eat something else. Do you like shish kebab? I got a speech to make. They take those hunks of meat and tomatoes, and they put them on a stick, and, and you eat it while it's on fire. It'll make us good and thirsty for tonight. <laughs> Call it good and loud. I'll do my best, sir. He's due at the meeting right now. Yes, ma'am. Calling Mr. Evans McCoy. Calling Mr. Evans McCoy. I'm sorry.
Sorry, I can't hold up the meeting for one man. Now, everything at this convention's been planned and scheduled for weeks. Immediately after this meeting, there's another one, then another one after that, and still another one after that. If we change the schedule now, it means that some of the business will have to be put off until next year, and it just can't be done. It... But just a few minutes. He's around here someplace. Oh, I'll be right there. The meeting's already underway. You'll have to excuse me. Yeah, but... Well... I guess we'll just have to wait and hope he comes along. Mr. McCoy! Paging Mr. Amos McCoy! Call for Mr. Amos McCoy! Do you think I'd have that boy turned off? <laughs> to make a man eat hunks of meat while they're still on fire. Aging Mr. Amos McCoy! Call for Mr. Amos McCoy! Aging Mr. McCoy! Call for Amos McCoy! That's the situation, gentlemen, that we have been confronted with for two months. Declining production. The chart speaks for itself. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Mr. O. The other officers and I have been flying from one plant to the other trying to find a solution. I just don't know. Every man in this room has his periscope up, but keeps running into seaweed. <laughs> and what is that supposed to mean? Well, it, uh, it simply means ceiling zero and um, our radar is broken. Wilson, are you trying to tell me that business is lousy? In a word, yes. What do you think the chart tells me? Submarine, ceiling zero. On my annual payroll, you gentlemen represent nearly a million dollars worth of executive brains. And yet, singularly or collectively, you haven't been able to solve the problem of our failing production. Well, Mr. O, suppose we bounce the ball against the wall and see in which direction it orbits. I know that... <laughs> Sorry. Right now, I want silence. Until one of you can come up with a workable idea. Something that we can at least catch on the fly and throw to home plate. <laughs> Sorry. I see you all waiting for me. Oh, what are you doing? That's all right. I'll get to it. You set yourself right down now. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I guess that'll be you, seeing as how you're sitting at the head of the dining room table. Well, Mr. Chairman and members of the Rules Committee. Where's the Pharaoh? Who? He must mean Farrell out of Rochester. <laughs> well, you can tell him what I said after six. Mr. Chairman and members of the... Oh, let's forget the fancy howdy-do's and get right down to what I want to say. Now, what I want to tell you is, I'm a man 65 year old. I work hard from morning till night, and I do a good job. I do a, a good job, because everything I learned, I kept right here in my head. So it's all there to pull out any time I need it. And what are you getting ready to do with fellas like me? You're getting ready to retire. Hey, retire, that's what you call it. More like checking us out, because we're old and your figure is useless. Old timer, I think you're. Uh, let Mr. Uh, let him hey, McCoy, Valley Branch. Go right ahead, Mr. McCoy. The trouble with the world today is they think the only smart ones is the young ones. Young ones is smart. But they only see 20, 30 years of the picture. We can see twice as much. So don't set no age for retiring. Don't throw away a wise old head. I guess that's about all I want to say. Thank you. Well, I see you all thinking it over, which is a good sign. I don't want to interfere with that thinking, so I guess I'll just say say on about my business. Thank you for the use of the park. <laughs> Yes, sir. 
Yeah, they listen to every word I say, boys. Well, I tell you, Amos, you got a silver tongue on you. <laughs> Amos, I'll bet if you put your mind to it, you could talk the birds right out of the trees. <laughs> well, I reckon we can go on lodging just as long as we want to. And don't you get on that executive council yet. Well, Sam and I are mighty grateful to you, Amos. As far as I'm concerned, you saved my life. Well, I was happy to do it. <laughs> sort of enjoyed it. Sometimes I think McCollin was to be a preacher. <laughs> he could do it. He, he could do it. Yes, he could. He was, I was thinking of me up a bottle of hard cider for tonight. Got a hidden McGriff up in Maru. And I got a box of American Eagle cigars. <laughs> well, that sounds like a mighty sweet combine. I don't smoke myself, but I'd be proud to carry American Eagle around my pocket. <laughs> now you just sit back there and take the sun, Amos. We'll be back in just a jiffy. <laughs> With the cider and the eagles. Yeah. <laughs> now don't go away. Yeah, I'll be right there. Yeah. Yeah. Right, honey. Oh, call Amos McCoy. Mr. McCoy, calling Amos McCoy. Somebody saying me? <laughs> Mr. McCoy? From top to bottom. <laughs> I've been looking for you for a long time. Your family's been very worried. Oh, well, I wondered what happened to him. Where they at? I'll take you to him, sir. Good. Uh, swimmer girl, there'll be a couple of fellas back here shortly. Tell them I'll be back. Well, what do they look like? Oh, you know them by the American Eagles they carry. <laughs> Don't you howdy us. Where have you been? What well, happened? Well, we've been looking all over the <laughs> Luke, he's been calling for a long time. Maybe you better give him something extra. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll give him 20 cents. You don't have to go crazy. I'll make it 15. There you are. You yelled real good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, where now, you Grandpa, where have you? Just, 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 just a minute. Just a minute. You tell us first. Well, I was at the meeting. I said my piece, and I done real good. Hey, now, Grandpa, we waited for you, and you never even showed up. What do you mean you waited for Grandpa, me, and I never showed up? Luke, I... Grandpa wouldn't out and out lie. Well, all right. All right, you just show us where you went. I sure will. You just follow me. Don't believe your old Grandpa. What a fine family I got. Well, it was right in there. Well... Grandpa, you picked a door with a banner over it, but I'm afraid you picked the wrong one. What's it say? It says Overland Industries, Grandpa. What? That's right. <laughs> you see that door there? Well, that's a banner that says the Mystic Nile. Well, for the love of... What an old fool. What a stupid eager and jackass. And poor Doc and Sam was accounting on me. And I let him down. I let myself down, too. But that's what comes of putting a payload on the back of a spamming old jackass. If only you hadn't strayed off like you did the minute we got split up. I never strayed off. Them lifting fellas from Toledo, they, they plucked me out of the air and they took me downstairs and they jostled me into one of them yellow jitneys and took me to the place where they fed me burned food. <laughs> I had a heck of a time getting away from them. Grandpa, I guess that's what comes of you having the kind of a face that Looks like it's out for a good time. It ain't out for a good time now. Just wants to go home and hang down. Peggy, Mr. McCoy. Peggy, Mr. Amos McCoy. Grandpa, that's you. I know my name, and I bet I know who wants me. That'd be Sam Watkins or Doc Thornton. Waiting to get a chance to bust a jug of cider over my head and stick American Eagle in my eye. Grandpa, you reckon that they know you never made the speech? I sure bad news travels just like a West Virginia twister. Hey, hey, Mr. Amos. Come McCoy. on, let's get to the car and get out of here. Yeah, well, wait a minute, Grandpa. Look, wouldn't it be better to face it now and not have to worry about it all the way home? Luke's right, Grandpa. It's four days till the lodge meeting. You won't sleep a wink building up to it. Yeah, well, I guess you sort of take my beating. And... Sure, the Calling away. Mr. Amos McCoy. All right, boy. I see Mr. McCoy, and he said he heard you, so you can quit yelling now. Oh, hello, Mr. McCoy. <laughs> they want you in conference room number two right away. It's important. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you give him 15 cents, I give him a dime. That's 25 cents to him a name call today. <laughs> I know what you're going to do.
want to say, I busted in the wrong route, and I flapped my jaw around, I'm sorry. But has ever gone down science... Mr. McCoy, Amos, my good friend, calm down. You're a good friend, Father. <laughs> it's true you got in the wrong room, but it's for causing trouble, quite the contrary. You made more sense in five minutes than my million-dollar brains did in a year. <laughs> I don't wonder you're confused. Your speech, meant for your large board, indirectly solved a problem that has been confronting Overland Industries for quite some time. Well, how could an ignorant old man who can't tell one banner from another happen Overland? You took the seaweed off our periscopes. Wilson. I know. Wilson. Yes. I was so impressed by what you said that I dispatched my entire staff to try to locate you. They, they found you through me. So you see, our introduction was fortunate, though a bit damp. <laughs> you made us realize that we had turned out to pasture a lot of our best brains. And that situation was the key to our falling production. So I said the right words under the wrong banner. <laughs> and they would have been the right words under the right banner, too, Amos. Mr. Overland gave your views on our retirement rules such a hearty endorsement that I've decided to call our executive council together for the express purpose of rescinding our retirement rule. You licked him. <laughs> so me and Doc and Sam, and we ain't through lodging, huh? <laughs> oh, not for a long time. You know, someday I hope to see you on the executive council. Mm -hmm. Here, here, Wilson. It's going to be a pleasure to replace you with an old man. <laughs> Well, see, if that takes care of all the business, I'd like you to have some fun. This is still a, a convention, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is, so enjoy yourself. <laughs> I know I'm going to. Uh, good luck, Amy. <laughs> yeah.